Hey guys, so I just played a game that had this position right here, black played bishop to b4 against me, and I actually missed the move that I should have played, and I think this is a really good learning opportunity. It kind of shows how tactical ideas can pop up out of nowhere, and you really have to be ready for them, or you will miss them like I did in this game. Now, it was a blitz game, but I still think there's a lot to be learned here, and so I want to break down this game, particularly this position, and see if you guys can find the correct move. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this game. All right, so I played e4. I like to play e4. That's my go-to. And d6. So this is the start usually of the Pierts or the, the perk where black will play knight to f6. And I played f4. And if you're wondering why I played this, well, this is uh, one of the lines that I cover in my new course. It's an e4 course. And I talk about all of the major responses that black has, including the Pierts. And there's a bunch of tricky ideas behind playing f4 instead of the standard d4 and so if you're interested in learning more about that check out the course it's on sale from now through july 4th link is in the description i put a ton of time and effort into that and like i said you'll get a lot more details on why i played f4 now my opponent didn't play the main move they played this really weird c6 which is like almost never played almost everybody plays knight to f6 but they played c6 i didn't worry about it i continued developing and now we kind of get into a little bit more of a standard position once the knight comes out Bishop g4, bishop to e2, played d4, I'm just taking control of the center, no reason to, to not do that since black is letting me. And they gave up the bishop right away, which I'm happy about. Generally speaking, the bishop pair is a slight advantage, and so I'm happy. And it's a, it's a nice place for my bishop, it's really controlling uh, the center, controlling this diagonal, dominating the knight here, and so I'm pretty happy about this position already. e5. I castled. I wanted to get the king out of the center, especially since we're starting to get ready to trade some things. You don't want your king to get stuck in the center. And so castled right away. King to h1. Sometimes beginners find this move kind of confusing. It's like, why are we just moving a king over? Well, it has to do with the, you know, we're kind of being proactive, right? I can just envision at some point in the future, this be, being a problem or even this being a problem. And very simple example here if imagine if i were to let's just say take this and play some random move and black takes here right and i'm like okay let me take my pawn back boom guess what i just lost my queen right just a, a quick example of how that can happen and i'm sure a lot of beginners have fallen for something like that and so what a lot of stronger players do before we even get to something like that it's like you know what let's just get the king to a safe square there's no more threats along the diagonal. There's no way that I could even be put in check anytime soon. My king is totally safe. It eliminates a lot of the tactics along this diagonal. All right, so queen to c7. I traded here and I played d5. Now this is kind of a good moment I think to talk about because sometimes people have a hard time knowing what to do when there's this pawn tension, right? It's like, well, I could take this way. I could take this way. I could leave it. I could push. How do I know what to do? Now, Stockfish says the best thing to do is just keep developing which when in doubt, develop another piece, right? You, you can't go wrong with that. So if you're not sure, play a developing move. It's pr even if it's not the best move, it's probably not gonna be a bad move, okay? So that's what, you know, Stockfish says was the best. Now, the reason I wanted to take was number one, I liked the fact that I opened up my rook. So now my rook's involved. Once this bishop moves, the rook is gonna be putting some pressure on some things. So that seemed like a good idea to me. Now you could say the downside to trading here is that it does free up Black's bishop a little bit, so that's kind of a trade-off, but I decided, you know, I was okay with that. And then I played d5, and one of the things that I was thinking about here was that if I take here, it looks like Black's knight is very, very strong now on e5, right? Like, that's, it's already supported. I have no pawns that can make it move. Yes, I can play bishop to f4, but, I mean, Black can probably just defend it, and I don't know, it just looks like a really strong and annoying knight. And on top of that, I now have an isolated e-pawn, which is long long term is going to be a weakness right isolated pawns generally are, are weaknesses and so i said you know what instead of doing that instead of giving black the strong knight and giving myself an isolated pawn let's push by gain some space and if black takes me i, I have a couple of options but i was probably just going to take here i have this really annoying pawn which is not isolated right in the future if i need to i can support it and get a pawn chain going and, you know, it just seemed like it made more sense. So that's why I decided to push in this position. So black castled queenside. And I took it. And 
you know, I just kind of said, well, since the king is here, like, why not take and start to open up the king? If black takes with a pawn, that looks like this is going to be a weakness, isolated pawns, right? And so I figured black would take with the queen, which they did. But now still, the king is somewhat open, okay? So bishop to e3, finishing my development. Knight to b6, there's an attack on my queen, so I have to move. And by the way, I should mention, I was paying attention to this earlier. Like when I played bishop e3, I was thinking like, do I have to be concerned about this? And I noticed that the knight can't move over here. The only place the knight can really move that makes sense would be here or here. And I'm going to have time to move my queen. And, you know, that's not really a big threat. So I wasn't worried about that, but definitely something that I, I needed to consider, right? So bishop d3, knight to b6, there's the discovered attack, and I move my queen. Now, black plays the move bishop to b4. So here we go. This is the, the position that I really want to focus on. And at first glance, it looks kind of... I would say tame, like, all right, I'm developed, my opponent's developed, I'm castled, my opponent's castled, pretty even position, right? Wrong. And there's a really nasty move here, which I didn't see in the game, and I want to give you guys a chance to see if you can find it. So I, I recommend you pause the video here and think through what do you think the best move is. Um, and after you do that, we'll talk about it, and we'll kind of talk about how you might have been able to find this move in, in your games. All right, well, if you had a chance to do that, uh, first of all, let me tell you, the move that I played was knight to b5. And I said, uh, you know, there's a fork here, so it's a very simple threat. But I, I didn't want to, you know, let black take here and, and infiltrate with the queen and potentially mess up my pawn structure. And I thought, you know, this makes sense as a way to create the threat. If black tries to kick my knight away, well, I can still go there and I'm still forking the pieces, right? So that was kind of my idea. I mean, I figured black would just play king b8. Um, and I figured the game would go on. But what I missed was knight to d5. Now, I did calculate this, but I failed to consider one important detail, okay? Here's what I failed to consider. After the trade, in my mind, I was thinking, okay, black's going to take my pawn. I could trade, and then I could take here, or I could maybe take there right away, something like this. And I thought, okay, I don't know if that's good for me or not. I mean, maybe it looks like I'm kind of getting to Black's king, so I was considering that, but I also thought, I don't know, it looks like Black's kind of got some nice central control here with the queen. I wasn't sure what was happening, okay? And so I didn't play it. Stockfish says, first of all, yes, this is an amazing move, but here's one one reason why, and we'll come back to some other reasons, but one reason why is in that line that I just showed you, after I trade here, there's a move, queen to g4, check, which is actually a fork on these pieces. Now, I had no idea until after the game when I was analyzing it. I had no idea that this even existed. And this just goes to show, even in a position like this, it looks like eh, there's not really much going on. No, there's, there's a lot going on. There's actually forks that can pop up very easily. And so what I want to talk about is how, how could I have seen this coming? Like, what should I have been thinking about? Well... You want to always be scanning for the major pieces, right? And if I would have done that, I maybe would have said, okay, the king is open on this diagonal. Like maybe bishop g4 check could do something. I mean, it opens up my rook. I, I get a check with the bishop. I don't know. Or if my bishop happens to move, then the queen can go there. Okay, not really sure how that could benefit me, but I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind, right? I'm going to move on. What else do I notice about the position? Well, the queen, it's lined up with the king, but there's no way for my rook to get there. So I'm probably going to skip over that. Uh, the bishop. Hmm. Is anything defending the bishop? No, it, nothing's defending it. That's an important thing to keep in mind, right? Whenever there's undefended pieces, when I'm saying undefended pieces, I'm specifically talking about these major pieces, right? That should, you know, if I remember that, along with the fact that this diagonal is here, now maybe when I calculate this in my head, I can think, hold on a second. If we do get all these trades, oh yeah, look at that. There's a fork, right? And I might have saw that. Um, and so, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you want to keep in mind. Another thing to point out here is Stockfish says, if, let's just say the queen moves back, doesn't take C4. And this is, is like super strong. I have this protected pass pawn right in front of black's king. I'm threatening to play like A, A3, B4, C5. My bishops are lined up. It's extremely powerful. Plus five for white. And I totally didn't realize that this simple move just immediately was winning for me. 
plus three from here, but then if black doesn't play extremely accurate, it easily turns into plus five, plus six. So the key takeaway is even in these sort of subtle positions where you might think there's not a lot going on, you want to be really thinking through some of those key features. Diagonals or files that lead to the king. Undefended pieces. And start to put all that together and, and maybe you'll be able to find moves like knight to d5, right? And by the way, I should mention, we're also attacking some things here. So like, let's just say black decides to, you know, go back here. We've got, we could take a lot, a lot of moves. We could take here with the bishop. We could play c4. This, this c4 move is really strong. Blackfish really likes this. And so this is kind of another idea in the position. And by the way, I should mention, if black tries to take, it's a complete blunder for, you know, the, the file is here. That's one thing. It also just fails tactically to this, right? But also if they take with the knight, again, the rook's going to come over. And this is just losing for black because of the, remember I talked about the king and the queen lined up on that file and I was kind of making a mental note. So I probably could have put all that together had I really been, been a little bit more careful. Now, like I said, it was a blitz game. So sometimes in blitz, you don't really think through it enough. But I think this is a really good learning opportunity. All right. So I'm going to show you the rest of the game. But I think we really, you know, hopefully learned something from that. So I played knight to b5, king to b8, c3. I wanted to kick the bishop away. Bishop goes back. I played a4, just kind of defending. We get this trade. And now a6. Now, this is a good mo moment to pause. What do you think I played here? All right, if you had a chance to pause and think through that, if you said knight to a3, you would be wrong because that's kind of the obvious move. But the problem with that is now I'm just losing a pawn and I didn't really get anything for it, right? So what I noticed was that instead of defending, what if I counterattack this guy? And so I played a5. And again, I was kind of keeping in the back of my mind, you know, those diagonals, the king, threats that I can make. And I noticed that, hey, if I can play a5 and force that knight to move, my queen can come in there. And that looks like really bad news for black. And so that's what led me to play a5. Also, the fact that I just generally speaking, I want to do something aggressive on the king side. And, and also that knight a3 just looked like I'm just losing a pawn and I'm not really getting much for it. So I played a5. And uh, the idea was that obviously after black takes me, I'm going to take them back. Now, unfortunately, the position is a little bit blocked off, a little bit more than I would like, right? And so that's, you know, that's what, going back to 95, why Stockfish was saying, hey, 95 was so much better. Now it's just slightly better for black. But um, at least I do have this annoying pawn on b6, right? So the rook comes down, played queen g5. I was looking for undefended pieces and noticed this guy was undefended. And so I took it and I have this fork on these pieces. Now, my opponent, I think, thought that they were going to get a really strong attack on g2, which they kind of did. The problem was they gave up a piece, and also their king is, is too exposed. Their, their king is in danger here. So I actually missed the best move in this position as well. If you'd like to pause, this is another good opportunity to uh, think through. But what do you think the best move is here and why? And if you had a chance to look at that, there's actually checkmate in six moves here. Not an easy one, but there is checkmate. And it's queen takes e5. Okay, the king's going to try to run in the corner. We sacrifice the rook. The pawn captures. And we play queen c7. And the point is that, yes, black has a lot of pieces lined up here, but there's no checks on my king. Not a single check. And I'm just threatening to go here, checkmate. And black has no way to stop it. Well, that's not true. They can sacrifice their queen. But if they don't do that, it's just game over. So they have to do that. We play e5, check. The rook can block. We take check. The queen can block, and it's just over. So really nice line there. I was on the right idea. I just missed the um, I missed the fact that I didn't have to like do it with check, and I could have just played queen c7, I guess. But what I did instead was, was kind of the same idea. I just did it a different way. So I took this, thinking that I was going to allow this, and then come over here. Now my opponent for some reason played here doesn't change the fact that i still have a win it's mate in three from this position you should be able to figure it out from what i just showed you but if you'd like to pause and if you had a chance to look at that queen to c7 check forces the king over we sacrifice the rook and the point is we want we want to lure this pawn away because once the pawn is away the queen can win for checkmate 
So uh, nice game. Hopefully you learned something. Like I said, the key the key position where there was a ton to be learned was right here. Okay, after bishop to b4, it looks like a very equal position, right? And there's so much going on. You just have to understand the tactics around knight to d5. So hope you guys um, learned something from that and enjoyed it. Like I said, if you want to learn about the system, if you're an e4 player, I go, I go over all of the responses that black can play. So e5, e6, d6, d5, c6, c5, and g6 and give you a system you, that you can play. Uh, similar to this, except they're all different systems. They're not all like these pawns up. It just, each one is different. And so check out the course. It's on sale, 20% off through July 4th. You have to use the code in the description below. There's a link and everything is down there. So having said that, I'll see you guys real soon, probably with uh, a candidates recap coming up at some point. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.